Hey everyone, today I want to show you how we can simplify your resolvers and remove all this noise of attributes that we introduced there because of custom state or because we want to use these hot chocolate data middlewares or other things. With hot chocolate 13, we can fundamentally simplify these things, especially when we want to use that in combination with state. Often when I look at GraphQL projects, they kind of aggregate some custom or global request state at the beginning of the GraphQL request. But then in the reservers, we have to use attributes and these attributes need to have keys passed in and it kind of gets messy. By the way, we are running workshops at multiple conferences throughout this year. So if you want to spend two days with Martin and me, diving deep into GraphQL concepts, exploring all about hot chocolate and looking at how I can consume GraphQL in React with Relay, join us. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive in. So I already have prepared here a little project that's more complex than the usual books and authors example I use. And we have here two specific cases I want to solve. Let's have a look at that. So the first one is I have here account types. I kind of have a user that's my user object. And I want to dive into a me node in my query and then have everything associated with my user. At the moment, I'm injecting here global state and I'm injecting here the username. So if the username is not null, I will fetch the user from the database. This state here is actually aggregated at the beginning of our request. And typically we see these request interceptors in our GraphQL servers, and they are invoked in the transport middleware. And we get passed in here the HTTP context and the query request builder. So at this point, we don't even have the GraphQL request object. And that allows us to set global state on the request. And you can see we are injecting here the username. So the username as null or even the username when we are signed in as a concrete thing. But one annoying thing here is that this username has to exactly match this argument name. If that is not the case, then we would need to specify it here. And then we could deviate from the username that we have specified in the state. So it's a very weak link, you could say. And typically what we use in hot chocolate, if you use the state, we kind of have very long names here. And that is done so we don't have collisions in the state. In this case, you could specify constants here, or you could wrap the, another attribute or things like that. Okay, so let's solve this problem, make our first resolver here very clean. So one thing we can see here is that we validate or we essentially look up the user. If it's not existing, we actually create the user object here. So we are already doing something here with the database. So instead of doing the work twice in our resolver and our request here, we could introduce some other state. So let's say, for instance, we want to create a service state. This could be something as simple as this guy here, where we have a record service state, which has a user and also our principal. Could be other things, like things that you want to aggregate at the beginning of the request. Okay, so this is our service state object. So instead of aggregating here the username, we could aggregate this object here. So let's rearrange our method here a bit. So instead of doing an any check here, let's actually fetch the user. Okay, with the user now fetched, we kind of do the same check. In this case, we are checking if it's null. If it's null, we're going to create it and then save our user to the database. And then we can create our service state here. Awesome. So we have our service state here. Let's add it as global state to our request. And in this case, maybe we want to use a service state also as a key to our state. So I'm just using the name of keyword here and pass in the service state the type. So the key will be service state. Next, we're going to inject the service state here and then we are done. Again, if we wanted to use that now, we would need to specify here the name of and then we could use the service state here. I actually don't want to do this, but let's just simplify our resolver first and then I show you how we make it really clutter free. Okay, since we have the service state here, we can now just return the user. And with this in, we can remove these guys here because we don't need a fetch from the database anymore. Let's actually just call this method me method, turn the async stuff here. And then this already looks neater. Second thing is I want to get rid of this attribute. 
And this is now super simple in Hot Chocolate 13. We actually reiterated quite a bit on that. We had this Resolver compiler integration, which felt kind of clunky. Uh, so we worked a bit more on the API and now it actually is quite nice to use. So I can chain in here and add parameter expression builder. Long word, I know, but we gotta be precise. Uh, next, the parameter expression builder allows me to pass in an expression here. And this expression gets in a context, a resolver context, and I can return anything that I aggregate here. It cannot be async. So this kind of thing is always be a think method. So no tasks or value tasks. In this case, I wanna look at the context or the global state. So I can say get global state. And actually, I want to allow a null global state. So if the global state is not there, I'm okay with that. So I'm saying global state or default. And then our global state is the service state here. And the key is the name of the type. That's actually all we need to do. We could make it more complex if we want to. There is a can handle method. Let me show you. You can see there is the can handle delegate here, here where we could really inspect the parameter for certain attributes and only apply this expression to this parameter if that means this can handle delegate here. But in our case, we use the default one and the default one will check if the parameter is of the type service state. Then we will use this value injection expression to inject a value into that parameter. With this configuration set, we can go back to our resolver and actually remove the clutter. Okay, so this is a lot less boilerplate and kind of nice to read. We want our service state and from the service state, we want to return the user. Let's try it out. So .NET Watch, let's go to Banana Cake Pop, open a new tab and then we can already see schema available. So there are no errors and then we query into it. So I'm going into me and name, run that, and I get null because I'm not logged in. I can simulate the login, so it's not really a proper login, so I can just say what I want here. Go to basic, and let's call me Michael, and the password can be anything in this case, and I just rerun that, and then I get my Michael object. Okay, this is a nice thing. So this is how you can integrate state, aggregate state, and then integrate it here. By the way, so how does this here get set up? This is the custom HP request interceptor. That's a class I implemented and it inherits from the default HP request interceptor here. And to hook this into the request pipeline, you gotta register it with this thing here. Add request interceptor, and then you can register your class here, and then it intercepts or it gets into the thing where we create from the HTTP request, the actual GraphQL request. Okay, let's look at the second aspect I wanna look at. Now this was quite nice. This is now fully simplified. So let's have a look at another problem here. So I have here the assets and there is the asset queries. The asset queries has a typical thing that uh, we see in a lot of GraphQL servers with hot chocolate. In the asset queries, we see this kind of thing, the get assets resolver here. And that's something very typical, right? We have this data pipeline here, use paging, filtering, sorting. And then we can see here, this resolver injects the resolver context in order to check if the where clause or an order condition is set on this resolver. Then we can then decide if we wanna apply a default order. In this case, we are ordering by the symbol, or if we want to return the naked queryable so that the use sorting middleware can essentially apply any order on top of that without inheriting this default order here. Let's simplify that. So first, because this kind of here is something that we do on any list that we have in our project. So let's simplify that into one attribute. So we could create a simple class here, let's call it use list. Make it sealed as all good attributes should be. And then we inherit from the object a field descriptor attribute in this case, because we wanna apply that on our resolvers. Next, we wanna override the configure method. So let's do that. Let me reformat that. And then let's implement that. So what we can do with Hot Chocolate 13 now is apply or wrap other attributes. So in this case, we could say apply attribute, and then we can pass in an attribute instance. And then we could pass in the context that we have here. So this is essentially on what we wanna apply it. And then we can apply the attribute. So I'm adding here our paging attribute, for instance. So what our attribute does in this instance is just applying the paging attribute. We also could set any property on this 
paging attribute. That's why we pass in an instance. And then it would apply this in this configuration. But we had three attributes, so I can kind of chain them. And they are applied in this order. And I pretty much can now just replace these three with use list. Okay, first, this kind of is neater. Now I just have one. It might be whatever you want to call it and might also have the configuration that you have set there. So the next thing is that I want to simplify this here, but I still want this if check in my resolver. I don't want to have the full context here. I don't want to have this magic string. So we could introduce an enum. Let's call this enum the sorting condition. And we have two members here, so none and specified. You can come up with whatever you like more. And now we want to inject actually this into our resolver and then ask for this specific thing. So we already saw that we could register resolver parameters globally on our configuration. But in this case, we only want to have this available if our attribute is applied. So what I can do here, take our descriptor, use the extent to get access to the lower level things, then say definition. And on the definition, I have this parameter expression builders. That's the same thing we injected on the global configuration. And there we can say add. And actually these expression builders are classes. So in this case, I'm using the custom parameter expression builder with this generic here. And I'm saying that the sorting condition is the thing I want to inject. And then into this instance, I pass the exact same thing that I used in the global configuration. So I'm specifying here my expression. Let's copy down the expression that we have here, this guy, then paste it in here, fix the context name, and then kind of this says is is not allowed in an expression because this is not a delegate. It's an expression that we compile actually. So in this case, we can just put an equals in and then this will work. And then let's just put the sorting condition in. If it's null, we have no sorting condition. And otherwise we have a sorting condition that is specified. Reformat that and then we would be done. So in the case you have more complex stuff that cannot be translated into an expression, you can always create a static method somewhere and just invoke it from your expression. That's valid. Okay, but in our case, this is a very simple thing. So I created the expression. Again, I could specify a can handle here as I could with the global configuration. So with this set, every time I use this attribute on resolver, I actually can inject the sorting condition into my resolver. It doesn't work if I don't have this attribute there. It only works when you have this attribute there. And then I can ask here, sorting is sorting condition specified or none in our case. If it's not specified, then we want to have this default sorting condition. Otherwise, we just return asset. So this looks a lot nicer to read, a lot less clutter, just one attribute. We don't have the full resolver context here. We have something that is semantically very clear now. This has to do with sorting. It tells us if the sorting condition is set or not. So one aspect before we try it out. So if you want to aggregate async data here, so data from the database and inject it you would need to combine this with a middleware. So you would have a middleware first and this middleware here would aggregate the data, write it to the context and then you could use it from the context, so from the global state. In our case, we don't do that. So let's see if it's rebuilt and go to Banana Cake Pop and write another query here. So we want to dive into assets, into nodes, and we just want to grab the name here and run it. And you can see it's ordered alphabetically. And that's our default order for the symbol. But we could specify here an order. So in this case, I want it to be ordered by the last price in descending order, which should have the Bitcoin up at the first item. Yes, that works. And then others. We also could use market capitalization to look for the widest distribution of a coin. Again, the Bitcoin, then we have the Cardano and then others. But you can see how easy that is now is 13 to simplify your resolver models here and get rid of everything that looks complex. So you essentially can wrap it into these nice configurations and then get rid of it in your resolvers. What do you think? Is that something you want to use in your next project if you're using version 13 or are you fine with putting all the attributes on your annotation based projects. Sound out in the comments. If you want to help our project, please go to GitHub and give us a GitHub star so that our community grows further and we get a wider reach. Thank you for listening and I see you next time.